don't often get too many long devotionals or devotionals in streams of the desert that are very long. They're usually about a page. This one's a little longer. <laughs> so maybe we'll just, without the umbrella up, it's bright. Maybe we'll just go ahead and see what the Lord might speak and what he might share with us today. Because it's a good day to be still, take a look around, maybe consider our own fallibilities and weaknesses sometimes as you're feeling down or out or feeling maybe like you need another cup of coffee <laughs> or feeling afflicted like my my wife has an eye injury and it's infected you know and so she needs to use eye drops and you know it's causing her some pain but in all of these things that we go through day by day you know we choose to either suffer in silence or suffer to ourselves or we turn them over to God and allow him to use them for what he might purpose in our hearts to accomplish through suffering June 20 <laughs> June there we saw giants numbers 13 33 yes they saw giants but caleb and joshua saw god those who doubt say we are not able to go up those who believe say let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able giants stand for great difficulties giants are stalking everywhere they are in our families in our churches in our social life in our own hearts and we must overcome them or they will eat us up, as these men of old said of the giants of Canaan. The men of faith said, they are bread for us. We will eat them up. <laughs> In other words, we will be stronger by overcoming them than if there had been no giants to overcome. Now the fact is, unless we have the overcoming faith, we shall be eaten up or consumed by the giants in our path. Let us have the spirit of faith that these men of faith had in those days and see God, and he will take care of the difficulties. It is when we are in the way of duty that we find giants. It's not when we're doing our own thing. It was when Israel was going forward that the giants appeared. When they turned back into the wilderness, they found them. There is a prevalent idea that the power of God in a human life should lift us up above all the trials and conflicts. The fact is, the power of God always brings a conflict and a struggle. One would have thought that on his great missionary journey to Rome, Paul would have been carried by some mighty providence above the power of the storms and removed from the tempest and protected from the enemies. But on the contrary, it was one of a long, hard fight with persecuting Jews, with wild storms happening, with venomous vipers trying to kill him, and all the powers of earth and hell. And at last, he was saved, as it seemed, by the narrowest margin. And he had to swim ashore at Malta on a piece of wreckage and barely escape a watery grave. Is that being directed by God? Was that like a God of infinite power? Yes, just like him. And so Paul tells us that when he took the Lord Jesus Christ as the life of his body, a severe conflict immediately came. Indeed, a conflict that never ended. A pressure that was always persistent, but out of which he always emerged victorious through the strength of Jesus Christ. The language in which he describes this is most graphic. We are troubled on every side yet not distressed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, and the life also of Jesus might be manifested in our body. What a ceaseless, strenuous struggle. It is impossible to express in English the forcible language of the original. There are five pictures in succession 
In the first, the idea is crowding enemies, pressing in on every side, yet not crushing him because the police of heaven cleared the way just wide enough for him to get through, scrape through. The literal translation would be, we are crowded on every side, but not crushed. <laughs> the second picture is that of one whose way seems utterly closed, and yet he has to press through. There is light enough to show him the next step. The Revised Virgin translated, perplexed, but not unto despair. Rotterham still more literally renders it, without a way, but not without a byway. The third figure is that of an enemy in hot pursuit, with the Divine Defender still standing by, and he is not left alone. Again, we adopt the fine rendering of Rotterham that says, pursued, but not abandoned. The fourth figure is still more vivid and dramatic. The enemy has overtaken him. The enemy has struck him. The enemy has knocked him down. But it is not a fatal blow, and he is able to rise again. It might be translated overthrown, but not overcome. Once more the figure advances, and now it seems to be even death itself, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. But he does not die. For the life also of Jesus now comes to his aid, and he lives in the life of another until his work is completed. The reason so many fail in this experience of divine healing is because they expect to have it all without a struggle. They expect to have an instant healing, an instant deliverance, to be immediately taken away from that which maybe God is doing in them to accomplish His will and not what they want. And when the conflict comes and the battle wages long, they become discouraged and surrender. God has nothing worth having that is easy. There are no cheap goods in the heavenly market. Our redemption cost all that God had to give, and everything worth having is expensive. Hard places are the very school of faith and character. And if we are to rise over mere human strength and prove the power of divine, life divine in these mortal bodies, it must be through a process of conflict that may well be called the birth travail of a new life. It could be as though giving birth, as a woman does, through the agony and the suffering and yet the joy once the child is born. It is the old figure of the bush that burned but was not consumed or the vision in the house of the interpreter of the flame that would not expire. Notwithstanding the fact that the demon ceaselessly poured water on it because in the background stood an angel ever pouring oil and keeping the flame aglow. No, dear suffering child of God, you cannot fail if only you dare to believe, to stand fast and refuse to be overcome. Bottom line. <laughs> You will have, like Paul, circumstances that will come up that will seemingly perplex you, beat you down, surround you, compress you, even cause your very body to die. I mean, I've been there. I've experienced death in my body. I've experienced frustration in every kind of ministry you can imagine. I've experienced being pressed in from enemies that I did not know I had, been rejected and accepted. I've been stomped on and lifted up and you name it. I mean, I, I just can't think of anything I really haven't done. <laughs> it's like, oh boy, talk about either grace and mercy meeting itself in me and my life I love to look back and say, yes, you know, I understand that, you know, because God took me through that, you know, and he was there. And so I rejoice in the fact that in my life, that means in this body, I have seen those things that God has done that make me witness to the word and say, yes, this is true. It is a fact of what God can do. And God will do through you all that he has promised if you will keep in mind you do and are required to overcome because if you're just sitting it and you're just living it and you're just kicking back and you're just relaxing 
then when sudden storms come upon your house and you're devastated, it wasn't the Lord that didn't warn you to be prepared, but it was you who chose not to listen because God brings us daily what we need to meet the day and the evil thereof. For surely the days are evil and the time is at hand and the Lord is coming soon. So if you're really not prepared, then get ready. <laughs> Be prepared. Read your word. Go to church. Study. Pray. Do a devotional. Try an emotional. Take your day to God and he'll give it back to you in a way you never imagined possible. And then you will not be overcome in the day of trouble. Because the day of trouble will come upon you. That's guaranteed. But the way of salvation also has been given you. That God will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. But will with that temptation and trial, that tribulation, that circumstance, that realization that you're really needing God at that moment. He will provide that way of escape. And that way is called Jesus. And He is available to you today.